All right, welcome to a challenge me. This is going to be a subnetting and bit borrowing challenge me, and we're going to see where we are. Uh, this will give us an idea because I have a, a a pretty doozy one here right now that will walk us through most of the basic questions that you will get when it comes to subnetting and bit borrowing. Um, what we're going to do is walk through a particular scenario here, answer these questions. You get them right, you'll have a a pretty good idea of where you're. Uh, where your strengths and weaknesses might be in here and where you might need to practice or you might be good to go. You might walk through this no problem and say, hey, I got this down pat. Here's our scenario. Acme Corporation has a network range of 172.20.00 and that is a slash 16. So using the available private range network, Acme Corp network administrators must create six equal size subnets to accommodate the following sites with addressing for the facilities. The site numbers do not include a potential 20% growth, which must be taken in consideration. Okay. Here's our sites we're talking about. Denver with 400, DC 720, Houston 650, Los Angeles 810, New York 515, Miami 350. Here's the questions that we want to determine. A, what is our starting network range? So we have to figure out the starting range here. B, what is the size of our networks we must create? Well, there's a couple hints here. Pay attention. If you're going to work on, you have a potential 20% growth. You have, must create six equal sized subnets. Okay, a couple hints right there. So what is the size of our networks we must create? How many bits must be borrowed to accommodate the largest site? The largest site, well, we got 20% growth, so let's figure out what that is. Obviously, if they're all increased by the same size, that will be our largest site. But now we must figure out how many bits must be borrowed to accommodate that site. What is our site mask and cedar values once we're done? And starting with the smallest, what will the subnet information be for each site? Subnet information being a network ID, a broadcast, a mask, and a usable range. Okay, so at this point in time, it is time for you to get started. Go ahead and pause this video, try to work through this information, and uh, we'll solve it here in just a second. All right, so here we go. Let's get started on this. So, the first things first, we have to understand that each of these networks that are created they're going to be the same size all the way across which means our subnet mask will not adjust per site okay equal size networks we have to find out what 20 percent growth is so we know what the largest network is that we're going to have to accommodate let's figure out first what our range is beginning to end so that we don't ever exceed that so what is our starting network range well our mask value that we're dealing with right off the bat is a slash 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're dealing with a default B mask. Okay. So our network is 172, 20, 0, zero that's our mask value underneath 255 255 zero zero so we know this guy's not going to adjust this guy's not going to adjust we're going to play with these values right here though these can max anywhere from zero through 255 256 potential values we know that by putting the mask underneath understanding that an IP address octet this octet can have anything from 0 through 255 in it so that's 256 potential values zero counts don't forget to count your zero as one of one through 255 is 255 add your zero so you have 256 potential addresses minus your mask value for that octet 255 1 this guy's locked to 1 this guy's locked to 1 now here we have 256 minus our mask value of 0 256 minus 0 is 256 okay 
So if this guy can stretch all of these values up top, 0 through 255, those are all valid addresses that could be placed in there based on this mask value. So our range is going to run from 172, 20, 0, 0 through 172, 20, 255, 255. That is our entire range that we're working with. 172, 20, 0, 0, all the way through 172, 20, 255, 255. First thing's done. We got question number one is done and over with. So let's get our range over here. So question two asks us, what is the size of the networks which we must create? Well, they're all going to be equal sized and we have to figure out this 20% growth to determine that. Now why does that come into play? Why would we even be asked about a 20% growth? It's very important. What you have to think about is, let's say that we have a network that's 192, 168, 10. Okay? And we have several different networks that we've created inside of a building, a facility, different companies, whatever it may be, um, or di different facets of our company, excuse me. Whatever it may be, these are all the addresses we're using for different sites or locations. And we did this, we stopped here as slash 24s because we had to accommodate 200 and let's say 47 hosts as a max okay we have this laid out this is all nice and neat all of our DHCP stuff set up and everything is laid out properly but then what happens is this site site number one has a a new um, maybe a new area that is structured and created on site now we have to use another 55 to 60 addresses to accommodate this first site. If we don't take that growth into um, consideration, what's going to happen with this range with another 50 to 60 addresses on top of this? He's going to spill over. He's going to spill over here and we, we are either going to have to stop as administrators and recreate all of this, which means reconfiguring everything from a network standpoint, a support standpoint, that would be a, a real pain. So instead what we do is we create enough space to accommodate where we are now and where we see ourselves going without creating excessive waste. So as an administrator you have to have a really good understanding of your environment that you're working in and what it is that you guys are doing as a company, the direction you're heading in. Okay. So let's see what it is for the sites that we have created. Our largest site that we have to accommodate is Los Angeles. There's 810 devices we have to take into consideration. If you add your 20% on top, this will give you the largest site that we'll have to accommodate, which is which will tell us how we need to carve our network up. Okay. Um, one way of doing this, simply punch this into your calculator: 810 plus 20% or a10, slide your decimal over 1. If that's 100%, slide them back 1. That's now 10%. Double this number, you get the 162. Add 162 on top of a10, and you will get to 972 for that site. Okay. Uh, another option is simply just to say 810 times 0.2, and you're going to end up coming up with this 162 number add that number back to your starting and you will have your entire site range. So we know our largest site right now, Los Angeles, is actually going to need 972 devices. That tells us how large we're going to have to carve our networks. So for our problem, what we figured out is we, we are concerned about host. We have to accommodate these hosts, okay? We know off the bat that we're dealing with a class B which means this guy from an addressing standpoint could have 256 values this guy could have 256 values when we multiply those out that means currently we can fit in 65,536 hosts into this one network well, now we're gonna have to chop it up this is where our 65k is because that's the last bit on if you move this direction 
every time that you enable a bit in your mask value you are going to chop this host value in half okay so 65536, if you divide it by 2, it's going to get you around 32,768, I believe. So enable that guy, we're down to 32,000. Enable that guy, we're down to 16,000. Enable him, we're down to 8. Enable him, we're down to 4. Enable him, we're down to 2. Enable him, we're down to 1,000. 1,024 is where we're at. Okay. So enabling 6 bits will decrease us from our default B range of 65,536 down to 1,024. So by determining the size of our networks and the hosts needed, we can answer this next one pretty easy. So it says, how many bits must be borrowed to accommodate, th that should be the largest site. Well, how many bits must be borrowed? All we do to solve that is we start with where we were and we had 16. How far did we go? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. We grab six more bits. So how many bits must be borrowed? We're going to say, after I get my pen going here, six. What is our site mask and cedar values? Okay. Well, in order to get our mask, we're going to add up the bits that we've enabled and determine the mask value. So 128 plus 64 gets us to 192, plus 32 gets us to 224, 240, 248, 252. So our new mask value here, let's get this guy out the way. We're looking at 252. Now what's the cedar value? How many bits are enabled? We got 16 by default, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So a slash 22. Okay. So filling in our results over here, how many bits must be borrowed to accommodate the largest site? Well, we went from a default slash 16 to 22. So we borrowed six bits, as you see down here what is our site mask and cedar values they have to be equal size sites so every site will have the same mask 255 255 252 0 or slash 22 as we mentioned up here in binary that's what the mask value looks like just as we have down here okay understand that that's a, an important piece that you must understand that every site must have an equal subnet mask because in reality all that the subnet mask says is how large is this network so we're going to provide a net ID a starting address for each of these sites and with that starting address there's going to be a mask value because they are equal sites that's the same because all sites are going to have the same length to them so that does not have to change but understand that we cannot duplicate network addresses this is all underneath one corporation, the Acme Corporation. So we cannot duplicate these network addresses inside of their own network. There can only be one 172.20.4.31. There can only be one of those. So that cannot duplicate across any of these sites. That's where this range comes into play. That's where this net ID comes into play. Where do we start? How far do they run? Okay. So let's break those down over here. All right, starting with our first site here for Miami, we're going to start with the first available network that we have, which is 172.20.0.0. What is our broadcast address? Well, to figure that out, we have to determine what the ending, the, the range, the complete range of this. So here's something to do when you're filling these out. Jump to your second site. Fill in all of your net IDs all the way down. How do we know what those are? Well, these networks increase. They start at every four. That is our bit down here, the last bit we enabled. So that becomes our additive. So if we have a network at 172.20.0.0, we're talking about the third octet because that is where our mask value is being adjusted. Now we have a network ID for this site of 172.20.4.0. Uh, 
Now you might be asking where that four came from. Four, again, is our additive in the third octet. So networks start at every four. If they start at every four, what does this guy become? 172.20.8.0. What's 4 plus 4? It's 8. Come to this guy. We're going to start at 172, 20, 12, dot 0. What's the net ID for the DC site? It's going to be 172, 20, 16, dot 0. And what's going to be the net ID for our Los Angeles site? We're looking at 172, 20, 20, which is the next network available to us, dot zero. Now that we have every net ID associated, increasing by four, zero, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, what is our broadcast? Well, it's got to be the address previous to this. Okay, it's its entire range, so its range is going to be 172, 20, 3, 255. That's the max value that can exist on this network. From there we can determine, well we already know what our mask is, we specified that doesn't differentiate across any of our sites. 172.20.01 through 172.23.254. That's usable. That means we can assign hosts any of these values right here. Okay. So we got Denver, 172.20. 4567255 is the broadcast. A mask value 255, 255, 252, 0. So, what is our range for Denver? 172, 20, 4.1. Remember, 4.0 is the net ID, so the next available address through 172, 20, 7. 254. 255 is our broadcast, so we're going 254. I'm going to take a moment to fill these in, and then you can go back and check yours against it. All right, so going back and looking over our numbers, our subnet details per site. So Miami needed to accommodate 420 hosts. This is their net ID. That's their broadcast. This is the mask, and there's our range. Everything in between our net ID and our broadcast. Denver is going to start at the 4.0. It's going to run to 7.255. New York, 8.0 to 11.255. Houston, 12.0 to 15.255. DC is 16.0 to 19.255. And then we finish with LA at 20.0 to 23.255. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what we have done now is we have created 6 equal sized subnets to accommodate these sites with 20% growth as with the starting range of a class B private okay now obviously we have because our initial was 172 20 255 255 and we finished at 172 20 223 254 we have a lot of space left over but we have accomplished our task. Maybe that could be used for future growth, future sites, things of that nature. So this was James Graves. That was your challenge me. Hopefully you got it. If not, jump back and, and go through the subnetting module. Not a big deal. This stuff's difficult to grasp on the first go around. So go back and check it out. Otherwise, you're ready to move on and let's check out some BLSM. Thanks a lot.